Hi, everybody. How you doing? I am Johan. That over there is Mr. Charleston <laughs> Hughes. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us today from the Toronto Argonauts, wide receiver, Juan Preskison. I knew yeah, I was going to yeah. fuck that up or come close <laughs> and be able to do that. No, that was good. Yeah, that was good. I know your, your mom's going to be fucking giving me shit on Twitter if I fuck that one up. <laughs> I didn't do that. Probably. Yeah. John, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, man. We're excited. I'm excited. I'm the only one in Regina wearing double blue on the day of a rider game here. So I'm excited, but this. Yeah, we got to upgrade that. We got to upgrade that jersey, too. <laughs> well, you want 39? <laughs> I just got this, man. We got to get. I don't even want to talk about buying Argo merchandise. We'll save that for another fucking day. But uh, or when, I'm in, when I'm in Toronto in a few weeks. But. Um, but how are you guys doing? This is the day before you guys are in Calgary. First, I'll, show, I'll start with Juan. Juan, it's been two years since you played. You're going back to Calgary where you first started in the CFL. How are you doing? How are the feelings right now? Uh, honestly, I'm really excited. I was, I was getting a little nostalgic uh, when we were driving back from the airport, uh, driving past places I lived my first couple of years. Uh, and just um, have a lot of great memories in the city. Um, but I'm just excited to play tomorrow. It's been a very long time, and um, I, I can't wait. Yeah, Chuck, what about you? How's it feeling with you going back to Calgary? Um, you know, you're, you, you haven't played in two years. You've been here in Regina for a while. Now you're in Toronto, new team, new teammates. What's your, uh, what's your reaction going back to the, the city where you first started off in the CFL? How's it been? Nah, it's been all right, man. I can't remember nothing from way back then, so I'm just kind of <laughs> just flying by the wind. I'm trying to hit all the old spots where I used to eat at and oh. have food, so I've been ordering out to all those places, but that's about it, man. Nothing crazy. We got to talk about it. First off, that's a great background you got going on there, Charleston, and then second, we got to talk as much food as possible because I know that you are hungry right now. You've been, what have you been doing before this? <laughs> You've been talking about Bo Levi the whole time with TSN, eh? Man, and you know what? I get sick of TSN sometimes because they <laughs> ask me the same questions over and over and over, and I get tired of replying the same way, so I have to ch change up you know, my responses most of the time. But they asked me about Bo again, and I told them that Bo is the golden child. When whatever Bo says, that's what goes in Calgary. Bo will outlast everybody in the organization in there as long as he's playing football. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, what, Sean, what do you think about that? You're just sitting there smiling, <laughs> not, not saying a fucking thing. I mean, I, I don't, I, I definitely don't, don't disagree with that. Um, I mean, it's just like how Tom Brady was in New England. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing that I see wrong with what Hugh said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Always agrees with Chuck, yeah, and we will do that. So what, Juan, you know, you played your first three years in, in, uh, in Calgary. Um, tell us about those days there. Tell us about playing with Bo, telling us about, you know, your first, what are your most memorable thoughts? Oh, uh, yeah, so I was actually there for four years. Four years, um, sorry. But, I mean, my most memorable, memorable thoughts were going to the Grey Cup three years in a row. Um, you know, I, I didn't realize how spoiled I was at the time. But the more that I um, talked to older guys in the league that haven't even, you know, been to the playoffs or even came close to a great cup, I realized how fortunate I was. Um, but most of the stuff really was just like, you know, some of the, the guys I met in Calgary and, and uh, friendships that I made um, and, you know, just being part of that, that organization. Um, like coming into the league was probably one of the best things that could have happened to me because it, it really showed me like how to become a professional and, and kind of just uh, be around um, some of the, some of the best players in, in the league at the time. So, um, you know, I, I was definitely grateful for that. You know, and, and if you talk to guys, I mean, you guys know a lot of your friends and people to watch. Juan's roommate's going to come walking in and be able to check it out on this. I think but, I just heard him come in. Yeah, yeah he's here. <laughs> he's going to want some free air time, too, and be able to do that. But, no, um, you know, we talk to the guys in the league. You talk to guys like Derek Dennis, um, you know, who started off in Calgary, too. And, and the one thing that everybody keeps on saying is that how awesome Calgary's organization is, right, Chuck? I mean, and you were there for how many years? 
Um, what makes Calgary different? I'll ask both of you guys this, but what do you think? I mean, Juan, you're, you're only uh, a few weeks in with Toronto because you didn't get a chance to play with uh, Toronto last year, obviously with COVID, but what do you think makes Calgary different um, than the other clubs? You want to go first, Hughes? Or, or, all right. So, <laughs> He's just thinking about so food. For, <laughs> for me, um, it, it was the only thing that I knew at the time. So um, I was just used to just um, like the people there and, and how everything was run. But I would say like they do a great job of like building a culture and it's a consistent culture. And if you try and go against the grain, you're probably not going to last long in that organization or playing for the Stampeders. Um, and, and it's not like a bad thing, but it's just like most of the guys are, are great players, but also high character players like Chuck, myself, Tavares, um, Cordero Law, Eric Rogers, just some of the guys that we have over here in Toronto now um, that I had the opportunity to play most of my career with. And um, I think that's what makes them so consistent um, as opposed to other teams and other organizations that are constantly, um, you know, trying to find their identity and, and build that culture. I think Calgary already has that established and it's just kind of like plug and play basically. Yeah. Chuck, what about you? I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it's a lot of the stuff he just said, man. You know, they they've they've held on to the practically the same core pieces of what they have on their coaching staff for a very long time since the beginning of their career all the way up until now. So when you got guys like that that are, you know, are coaches that know how to work together, that know how to create a winning organization, a winning team, and know what they're looking for in their players, you know, that's the majority of the reason why they why they're so successful all the time. Yeah. Okay. Well, enough of the Stampeder talk. Let's go right into the Argos because this is why a lot of the the following. Uh, I've been Juan. I've been to tell you a little bit about me. I've been an Argo fan growing up here in Saskatchewan since I was a kid, and everybody asks me, "Why the fuck? Uh, how do you cheer for the Argos? You know, you're, you lived most of your life in you know Saskatchewan, Saskatoon, and Regina." And I say, well, I always wanted to cheer for a winning team. And B, I've, uh, I grew up watching Connor Rich Holloway, Terry Greer back in the early 80s, and Gil Fennerty, and then Rocket Ishmael, and Pinball, right? And doing that. But we always get so much trash for having four people at the stadium and having a shitty uh, fan base. How have you found it? So you're a Mississauga guy. You're a... Uh, you know, you're an Ontario guy. How have you found it with the fans in TO? So honestly, and I, I'm being 100% honest, I feel like there's a lot of um, closet Argos fans in Toronto. And the one thing about Toronto as a city, they love a winner. Um, if, you've, if you've seen uh, the Blue Jays, I think it was two years ago, or maybe last year, they were one of the worst teams in baseball. But um, a couple of years ago, when they were almost in the uh, World Series, yeah. the stadium was packed all the time. And all of a sudden, you know, they start losing and there's barely any fans at the game, right? So uh, I think part of um, just the Toronto fan base is the fact that the Argos haven't been a consistent winning team. Um, I mean, after they won the Grey Cup in 20, was it 2017? Yep. Um, they were one of the worst teams in the league the next year. Uh, so that plays a big factor. And um, I heard a lot of, you know, I want to say like some of the best things about, you know, playing in Toronto and playing for the Argos. But, you know, coming here, I really feel like I, I don't see anything like wrong with, with playing in Toronto. I actually really love the organization. I love the city. Um, and, you know, just walking to practice some days, um, there's a lot of people that, are like, you know, they can't wait for the season or they're saying go Argos and, and the the ages range from from my age to younger to older. So I just feel like there's a lot of fans out there that um, just want a reason to come and support. And I think if, if we're winning, they'll do that. Yeah. Um, it's not like Winnipeg and Saskatchewan where, you know, Sask has no other teams and Winnipeg has the Jets. Um, Toronto has so many teams, so... Um, if we're winning and, and, and we build that, you know, winning 
culture, I think that the fan base will will definitely come to more games. Yeah, Chuck, how's it been for you? Have you how many restaurants you've been to? How many jerk chicken establishments have you been already? <laughs> Uh, supporting there. What have you thought about? Yeah, that's what I want. That's what I, you know. What Juwan? Just tell me this: Has a fan from the Calgary Stampeders ever brought you food after practice like that? No, they. They. I've never. I've obviously Connie's brought me cook. She's the best. Connie brought us all cook. <laughs> yeah. Shout out but, to Connie. I appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> Connie. She's 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 up there for me. But um, I've never been dropped off a plate of jerk chicken and. That jerk chicken was really good. So shout out to uh, Fluffy for that one. He he's a a great guy for doing that. So Charleston, tell everybody what we're talking about here. Yeah, I put out a message on Twitter saying that hey, where's the best jerk chicken spot in town? Because you know I do feel like I cook the best jerk chicken, but I want to eat the best jerk chicken that in Toronto, especially because it's like a there's a high there's a large you know spotlight for people that cook Caribbean food there. So I wanted to taste the best jerk chicken in town. And uh, somebody responded on Twitter to me and Breast Case and saying that, you know what, they're going to bring it to us on a Tuesday. And it was delivered on a Tuesday. So that was awesome to be able to eat food like that. That is awesome. And like you said, Charles, how many times you were here in Regina for how many years did you ever get food delivered to you afterwards? Never. Never. If I put out a request like that, it was never answered. I put out a request like that in Toronto, <laughs> and the request answered. There you go. That tells you something. How, wait, <laughs> how many Caribbean spots are in uh, Saskatchewan? Well, the, hey, that's not the fuck. That's not the point here, John. <laughs> 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 maybe one, <laughs> if we're lucky. Maybe one. Yeah, Did you see any? Might be one. <laughs> yeah, check. I, I don't know if I've if there's any here in Regina, but that's awesome. And the fan base, like I said, I think. Juan, you hit the nail on the head right there, is that I think that the, the fans in Toronto, they want to jump on board winning. It's, you look at how many fans have been uh, around, and what I've seen, um, what I've seen is the Twitter fans. You have that Lori uh, Busey. There's Bercy. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a few other ones. There's that guy. He invited me and uh, a friend of mine. We're coming down for the first game. He, he I'll forget his name. I'm going to find it during the break, but... He invited us to be able to come sit front row, tailgate in the one end zone section to be able to do that. We're getting invites. We're going to be in Toronto for three nights. We want to go and meet some people. We want to go and feel the enthusiasm like there is across the CFL because I think Toronto um, Toronto has that. You just, you, you get the bad, Toronto's got the bad rep for fans coming out, not coming out and doing that. I think that uh, I'm excited to go down to Toronto's first home game. So, uh, what about you boys? Let's talk about you. What's the excitement level? Look at Charleston's face. He's so excited right now. Uh, <laughs> Charleston, how excited are you about the game tomorrow? Big game against Bo, uh, the golden child. What are you going to do? How many sacks are you going to get? Are we doing predictions right now or what? No, nah, man, I can't make no <laughs> predictions on this game, man. It's against, it's against CFL policy. Me to predict, make oh, predictions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And with betting, I guess right now we shouldn't be mentioning anything about bets, but I will mention one thing. You guys are getting disrespected across the board. Bodog has you at 750 to 1, I think, the odds. Second last to win the Great Cup, and I'm putting down money uh, on you guys, that's for sure. With those odds, I'll take it. But uh, how excited are you about playing tomorrow? Uh, I know I'm, I'm excited. It, it doesn't, for me, it didn't matter. Um, who we played for the first game, but um, I, I thought it was pretty funny that it was Calgary because it's the last place that I played. Um, and I'm, you know, I feel like I'm coming back to my second home. So um, I felt like it was just kind of crazy after two years that I ended up back in Calgary for my first game of the season. Um, and I'm excited. Uh, we haven't played in a long time and um i don't really know what to expect but i just know that i'm prepared and, and ready to play and um just gonna make the most of it yeah chuck what about you it's been a while how's your old body gonna take this 
Man, I don't know, man. I'm going to try to ease my way into the game slow. I'm going to take one rep, then come off. And I'm going to take two reps, then come off. You, know? you wish. Yeah, I'm going to try to ease my way into this game slow. But, yeah. but it, I mean, I'm excited too, man. We've been out of football for a while. So it's just like... It sucks. I mean, it's, it's like, just like I've been telling everybody else, man, it's a taste of reality now. Now that you got a taste of reality, what's life without football? And now you get to get back into it. I mean, now you appreciate the game a lot more. So when it's when it's like that, man, all you can do is enjoy it while you have it because it can be taken away from you at any time. And now that we know that, I mean, like I said, you can appreciate it a hell of a lot more. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. What's the... I, I don't... Go ahead, John. I was, I was gonna say I don't know about you, Hughes, but like the the time off kind of like like you said, it kind of puts things into perspective. And like I feel like I'm able to practice and, and play kind of like with a freer mind because like now like it, it's it's more fun, right? Like it was happy, like I was happy to be back in the locker room with you guys and be able to you know play play football again. And I definitely took that for granted, but now. I'm just like I'm just out there having fun really. Obviously trying to win, but at the same time I'm just like I have like a I feel like I have like a clearer mind when it comes to football. It's not as stressful as it used to be. Yeah, that's awesome. Chuck, what about you? Are you uh I mean, are you vigorized again by the game? Are you <laughs> any, any, anything that you're looking think- forward to or what's the you know what's you're on both you guys are on with a new team new teammates which has got to be a little bit different right but what's your biggest thing chuck that you're looking forward to to, to tomorrow oh shoot our biggest thing is i'm looking forward to that first sack once i get that first sack out the way and look for it in the first 10 plays if i get a sack in those first 10 plays of the game i'm going for three all right okay and what about what what's your sack dance going to be are you going to do the surf are you gonna do the the dead south strut? What's your what what is your celebration gonna be after your first sack? Or we just gotta wait and see. Man, you know I gotta keep it original <laughs> for the first one. <laughs> oh, 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 man. We're gonna, we're gonna see something new. <laughs> he, all right. He might be looking for the oxygen tank after the first couple of drives, so <laughs> you might not have you might not <laughs> you might not remember to celebrate. <laughs> You do got a point there because this shit, it ain't even the altitude what's going to get me. It's the altitude plus all the smoke in the air. Like, it, it's bad. The whole yeah. city smoked up. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. so it's that bad right now in Calgary? It's, it's not. I, you can see it, actually. Yeah, you can you can see it for sure. Here in Regina, yesterday the riders had to uh, get off the their um, – what do you call it? Their walk on their just their walk through walk through their walk through. Their walk through. They were um, it was so smoky here that they opted to go indoors and do the walk in uh, walk through indoors. So I don't know if that tells you about their culture or what, but they can't take the smoke here. So we'll be able to see about tomorrow. So um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. What else, uh, Juan? What are you thinking about um, tomorrow? You got all new. Uh, teammates right how's it been learning the offense oh i mean we uh coach dinwiddie he makes it simple um i I was already used to this offense and honestly everybody except for one starting receiver i played with in calgary so the receiving core doesn't seem that different and um the offense doesn't seem that different either so um i think that's that makes it easier uh, for me to just go and play fast and not have to think as much. Um, but I'm definitely excited to line up with the guys that I have. Um, it's one of the best receiving cores that I've been part of. Uh, and uh, I just think that if we, you know, are all on the same page, that we can do some great things. Yeah, I was telling Chuck, the one thing with the Argos that I'm always worried about and I'm worried about since I was a kid was the quarterback position, you know, uh-huh. is, you know, <laughs> when we had legends – like, I mean, Connor Holloway, and we had um, Damon Allen, Ricky Ray. You, you look at those guys, were established in the league, and they're veterans. But when you get guys, I mean, McLeod has is, is been a veteran too, but the quarterback position in the CFL is so key. And without that, you guys, if the ball isn't there for you guys, it's not going to be good. It's not going to end up good. Just look at how uh, Hamilton did last night. But uh, did you guys watch that game or no? Yeah. 
I did. Yeah, it, was yeah. a, it was a stinky game. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to go to a short break. When we get back, I want to get into a little bit about, well, we'll get into about Twitter. Uh, we're going to talk about how, what Juwan thinks about Charleston's Call of Duty skills. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, Nothing but dubs coming with you, boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, fuck right. And, uh, we'll get into a little bit more about the rest of the year, and we'll talk a little bit more Argos talk here with The Better With Age. Hi, my name is Rob Peterson. I'm the broker owner of Realty One in Regina. Real estate and life is about great people, and that's why I'm associated with Charleston Hughes and Johan Zielinski and IKS to sponsor the Better With Age podcast. Realty One was founded in Regina 11 years ago. It's an independent brokerage, it's local, and it's full of great people helping great local Regina people buy and sell properties. It's entrepreneurial based, which means you have non-narcissistic agents that have your best interest in mind, not their own. In these coronavirus times, real estate market right now in Regina and Saskatchewan is thriving because people are thinking more local, they're not thinking about traveling because we can't, and that's driving our market. When you hire a realtor, no matter who it is, no matter what company, please interview them. Please make sure they're a good personal fit for you because that's what this is all about. It's good people connecting themselves with someone that they know has their best interest in mind. And that's what the Realty One family does. And that's what a lot of agents in Regina do. But make sure you take your time and find the best fit for you and your family. It's that time of year when divisions are decided, champions are crowned, and legends are born. Now, it's your turn to win big. You've heard the name just about everywhere, my bookie. They're the industry's leading online sportsbook and casino, and it's not hard to understand why. With thousands of lines to bet on all your favorite sports, NFL, NBA, and college ball, check, check, and check. MMA and soccer, they've got all the latest odds, period. Take advantage of MyBookie's prop builder and live in-game betting, where every single run, throw, and touchdown is another chance for you to put cash in your pocket. Visit their mobile-friendly website today and get your deposit matched halfway up to $1,000. Just use the promo code when you make your first deposit. The best part is they make it simple, with a variety of ways to deposit instantly, including credit card, bank transfer, Bitcoin, and more. Whether you're at home or on the go, on your laptop or on your phone, it's not too late to make your New Year's resolution a resolution to get paid. Bet, win, and get paid at my bookie. All right, we're back. We're back quickly. We had to Are come we back? back. We had to come back quick. Of course, we're back. We had to come back All quick because right. Chuck is hungry. I'm Easy. starving, man. I'm <laughs> starving. Juwan, do you got anywhere special I should eat? Where should I eat at in this city? You've been here. You're the last Four person years. to say every, I, I you was were here, here so longer long ago that every <laughs> restaurant that I've used to go to is gone for the most part. Uh, go to the Mexican I, place. You know, I, I like Japanese village. You uh-huh. know, I like that. But, um, so you like flying I can't really think of anything. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what survived COVID and what didn't. What restaurant survived and what ones didn't. Well, let's let's talk about that right now because you got a chance to plug. What's it, your teammates Shane Richardson? Shane Richards. Shane Richards, uh, chicken joint. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're in YYC, uh, check out Four Corners Wingstop. It's owned by Shane Richards, one of our old linemen in Toronto. Um, it's a, a chicken wing spot, um, brand new. Um, I had some last night. Very, very good, and I definitely recommend it. Nice. Let's uh, now that we got we got a little bit peek of your roommate. Charleston wanted to bring. I up. know. I seen him. I seen him peeking in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't even see him really. What's up? Hey. So, I, so out of y'all, two, who, do, who do work, who the worst roommate? Who snores the most? Him. <laughs> Uh, he was snoring last night. I had the fake cough. I was like, <laughs> I, I <didn't> believe that. <laughs> Chuck, what, what you was just doing in the bathroom for about 20 minutes? I was hiding, bro. I thought this was TSN or something. Bro. I was like, let get up out of here. We're no TSN, that's for sure, fuck. But that's all right. We're in, this is Charleston's show. Tell me what you think about playing with Charleston. Uh, it's cool, man. You know, Charleston bring the energy. Um, you he's know, old. How does he bring uh, the energy? 
he talk a lot of junk, man. Oh. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> On days when we down, he he bring the juice. So we, we try to compete with him at all times. Yeah. He talks hey, a lot of junk. That's, maybe that's my new name. Maybe I'm the real juice man. We're only see him for like one play and then we'll see him on, on the sideline. <laughs> yeah. That's what he said. I asked him, I said, Chuck, how's the training camp been? And he goes, Well, I, I tried hard for the first two days and I've been off since. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll see. He, he shows up he shows up around the end and then when everybody's tired, he starts flying around and, and he's like, Man, I feel great. <laughs> 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 that's awesome well we're gonna see proof is in the pudding tomorrow when you guys play so we'll see what's up with that so for sure <laughs> good luck tomorrow but well, let's talk about a little bit more about twitter i want to find out juan you were trash talking charleston or was Charles, charleston trash talking you At about pd is a terrible i want him to be in there for this because what you got to hear this conversation right here okay how who do you think is the best call of duty player out of me and davaris juan Uh, it it depends what day. Honestly, he's been consistent though. What recently? <laughs> I ain't played with you recently. I, I, it was too bad for me. In he the found he found the um, what was it, the Swiss? The Swiss, and man. then he started going crazy. <laughs> hey, but but Hughes, we we really made you into who you are today. Well, that's... I know how to motivate you. Well, that's what I saw on Twitter. I think I kept on seeing Juan kept on trash talking Charleston about his Twitter game and saying, quit shooting us or you're killing us. You're killing your own guys. What are you doing? And I think, did that motivate Charleston to get better or no? I think so. His game, like, he, he improved. He, he definitely most improved right now. <laughs> um, he, he went from, you know, not landing with us to just leaving. The, like, he'll just go and get, go to his refrigerator and get some food while we're playing and I'm dying. <laughs> he's not there. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that sounds to, like Charleston. <laughs> you know, just not following the team, and now he's he's bought in. He's a, he's a new player. <laughs> you y'all really want to know what enhanced my game so much? I switched to a different controller with the paddle buttons in the back. There's some buttons in the back that I didn't <laughs> even know about. I had a gamer teach me about the back buttons. You know what I mean? The back buttons. Yeah, no, those, the bars, that's a so you know about the back buttons on the controller. That's a custom controller. That's why you have that. <laughs> you know, I switched to that controller, and that enhanced my game, and I started going crazy on the on the sticks. <laughs> so if I get that, then I'm getting 20 kills a game. <laughs> Charleston, I got to see you on this Call of Duty, man. I think that's... You see, DeVaris ain't say nothing, because he can't keep up with something like that. <laughs> oh, We're not, we, we not even in competition, like... You, you way below my level. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I want to get into. The trash talking Call of Duty. If you believe that. If you add, cause, cause everybody know javar has got small hands. But if you add a couple more buttons to that controller like that, he can't reach them. His pink game. <laughs> you want to talk about hands, Chuck? Show us your fucking hands. Look at the V that it's in there. Show the boys your hands and how it. Yeah, exactly. How the hell did those fingers? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> How do those <laughs> fingers reach anything when they're off to the side, man? Jesus. Oh, my you, God. You need a custom controller for those fingers to be able to move, move around. <laughs> that's what that's what, that's what sacking 130 quarterbacks look like. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> that's fair. Uh, oh, my God. I don't know if I want that. <laughs> yeah. So I like the trash talk. We'll keep on going with this trash talk theme and be able to do that. Is it? Um, who's going to be the best trash talker on your team? Who's been around uh, uh, in practice now that you guys have been kind of chirping the most? Any new guys, or has it just been Mr. Hughes doing a lot of the talking? Honestly, Hughes doesn't even really talk that much anymore. He's out of breath. He's more of a, of a pre-practice talker. Um, but definitely Shaq Richardson, yeah, Shaq hands down. Sure. Shaq, he just, he doesn't know when to stop, so... It's funny, though. Gets you ready for the game. <laughs> Chuck, what's up with that? Are you not talking anymore? You're just catching wind? Or I'm too, what? Man, I'm too, I'm too busy running. See, when these two catch the ball, I'm on their coattails, hawking them down. <laughs> like, if they catch a deep ball, I am running. Bro, you're not. That happened 
That happened twice. <laughs> At the end of practice, like I said. <laughs> on the three. <laughs> yeah. I want to know what, Charles, what was that picture I saw with you in training camp actually running with the ball? You had this intense look and they got it on and posted on Twitter. But what the hell are you doing with the ball running? <laughs> that's called me. That's called me making a play. That was, and that was just and that was just the average play. I just ended up with the ball in my hands, but I was outrunning everybody. I just didn't see it. There was three people beside you in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> the whistle blew. He kept running. Right yeah. there, you go. Finally, the truth comes out to be able to do that. Boys, I wanted to ask you about a little bit about what's it like to play for Pinball Clemens. How is he? Speaking of talking. How has he been at practice, and how has he been for a motivating factor when you see uh, a legend, a CFL Hall of Famer like that on the field? Honestly, um, I personally never witnessed anything like it. Um, Pinball is a great person to play for, and I grew up watching him. Mm -hmm. um, so actually being able to talk to him, and you can really go to him with anything, and he'll help you out. And as busy as he is, he's, he never says no. And, um, you know, he's the kind of guy that will help clean up after practice or he's out there and, you know, he knows, you know, your, your mom's name. He remembers things that you tell him and he has conversations with you. He's not just in the office, um, you know, being a GM, he actually is very personable and, um, it makes you want to play for somebody like that because, uh, you know, that he actually cares about you, um, as a person. So. Um, from my perspective, that that's something that was really new to me. Yeah, Chuck, what about you? I don't know, Devars, what you think? I mean, I I never really had it like a GM that you know that has a relationship with the players as much as he does. Um, I think that you know he's always around. You can always talk to him. You can always pull up and just talk about like life stuff, not just football all the time. Uh, he cares about you as a as a person first. And I, I think that he, like, genuinely means that uh, as opposed to people that just tell you that all the time. But um, it, it's nice to have something like that just to be, like, a fresh air from from football and, and to have, like, just that sense of a real relationship between you and, and somebody that's, you know, higher up in the, in the ranks like that. Yeah, Chuck, what do you think then? Um... I think the same thing, man. I think it's a crazy relationship that he has with the with the team like that. And usually, like, when it comes down to uh, actual GMs, you're kind of afraid. You're kind of afraid of them. You kind of want to distance yourself from guys like that because, you know, they're the decision makers in the organization and and, and they're, they're the big wigs, right? So to have a relationship like that with him that he cares about you as a person is it's amazing. It makes you almost forget about that he's your boss. <laughs> yeah, that's that's definitely, I think, one of the pluses of having uh, Pinball, um, you know, as a GM and working with the Argos because that man, uh, he's been amazing for the league and for the team. So, uh, yeah, boys, I know that you're, I know Charleston's hungry. You can see him sweating. I'm starving. You can see him sweating that he's getting so hungry and you can hear I'm his. so hungry. Devars, where the best place to eat at? You from Calgary too. Where do we eat at in this city? Where should God. I go to for, for lunch? For lunch? It's uh, For lunch? I don't know. For lunch, I would go to Japanese Village because it's cheap. I told you. Cheap. It's five to Damn four, man. Charleston. What do you mean lunch? It's almost supper. <laughs> What time? What are you eating here, Charleston? You, you haven't had lunch yet? I'm, trying, I'm about to eat both lunch and dinner at the same time. <laughs> oh, and here's that. So that's an American thing. We were talking about a few shows ago. With, I forget who was our guest. And we were saying, Charleston calls it dinner. I call it supper. Canadian, American. Yeah, I'm doing that. Okay. Yeah. Boys, well. Uh, Do hey. I call it supper too? No, I call it dinner. Dinner? Yeah, it's dinner. <laughs> Ah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Um, okay, boys. Uh, well, good luck tomorrow. It's, uh, it's been a blast. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Um, it's it's going to be exciting. Uh, we're looking forward to it. I think we saw all the excitement with the game in, in Winnipeg yesterday. And the CFL fans, uh, you could just see it all across social media, everywhere you go. Um, we're excited to see you boys back on the field. So we want to see... Uh, 
see you guys have fun. Keep safe with all the injuries out there. Holy fuck. Just uh, play hard. Keep safe. Uh, all the best to you guys. Go. Always stay healthy, man. It's crazy right now. Go Argos. And uh, we'll see you guys in a few weeks in TO. And uh, we usually close off the show with Chuck's wise words. So I'll let uh, Chuck ch take it away. <laughs> That's one's I, ready. I know y'all been this. waiting for this the whole time. <laughs> No, nah, man, I appreciate both of y'all doing this, especially DeVaris coming on at the last minute. You know, he coming out <laughs> fixing his hair and stuff like that. <laughs> hey, thank you. Thanks for coming on the show. This is Better With Age webcast. The reason we call it the Better With Age webcast slash podcast because there's many things that get better with age. Hopefully you guys age as well as I do over the years of playing football. Hopefully you guys, I bless both of you guys with the power to make it to the age of 37 playing this game because it is hard, it is tough. But there's many things that get better with days. You got cheese, you got wine, you got leather, you got whiskey, all those great things that I love that get better with days. But the most important of them all is friendships. So as long as you guys are on this show, you are a part of the Better With Days friendship cast. So we'll be posting this on multiple things. Juwan, is there anything that you want to post that's out there? Any sponsors? Any? Oh, yeah. What about your charities uh, that you no. support? I'll uh, I'll plug my Twitch uh, for one, so you can follow me on Twitch at jboogiexciii, and also shout out to Parabellum Esports who gave me the opportunity to kind of get my foot in the door with gaming and um, actually me and Devaris and Ucambry Williams we have a podcast coming out soon. And uh, this is the first time that we officially announced that. But, there you, you know, go. when you put the big three, you put the big three together and great things happen. So uh, <laughs> we hope to have the same success that you've had on your show. And uh, you got anything? That's it, man. Make sure y'all uh, check out the podcast when it come out. And, uh, man, I appreciate y'all having me on for a good 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh out of the bathroom. That's awesome. Good luck with that. <laughs> we gotta make sure we gotta make sure that we will plug the crap out of you guys too. That's awesome. There's nothing like seeing. Uh, let's let's try and get as much content out there about uh, your guys' show and about the CFL. And what's it gonna be about? What are you guys gonna have? Honestly, it's, it's gonna be very similar to what you guys are doing. Just having a bunch of different guests on and uh, just talking about worldly stuff and things that are going on in our lives and just try and get as many um, versatile guests on as possible. So it's not just going to be about sports. Um, so that's why we're really excited because we've met a lot of people throughout our athletic careers um, that range in different industries. And we kind of just want to bring that to the public. That's awesome. That's great. Well, we'll plug the shit out of it. Good luck with that, boys. That's Man, awesome. with a plan. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hughes, we're, we're going to get you on, though. Got to. We, we're, we, we have to. We know you have some, some stories and, and wisdom to drop. Don't yeah, you know I'm juice man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll get an episode. We'll get an episode with you and Law. I'm sure that would be really entertaining. Oh, I, I, I want to do it. Yeah, get us on. All right, <laughs> make sure you feed him before. Yeah, don't worry. We'll we'll take care of him. He gets grumpy when he's hungry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, boys, all the best to you. Good luck tomorrow, and take care. Take we'll care. see you guys in the six soon enough. Thank all you. All right, thanks. Okay. Have a good one.